Hey, what's up guys? This is Ashenox, showcase of Karik in Arena. This is on my third account on the Europe server. He is at plus 15 skill ups. The team at the table is the one I'm going to be using. Okay, let me show you guys his stats and his gear. So he's on Portrait of the Saviors. We're going to be cleaving with him using skill number three. If someone survives, we're going to be using skill number two for the big single target damage. And this penetrates defense by 30%, but you need speed buff. To get speed buff, I'm using Sinful Angelica. You could be using Yuna, or you could be using Rosied into an attack buffer, maybe like a Rose Knight, uh, something like that. And uh, this, well, it is your speed buff, so you could be using skill 2 into skill 3, but we're going for the cleave, baby. So I have to just use skill 3, and the skill 1, he's got silence for one turn, very powerful. And, you know, you can notice at the end here is damage dealt increases proportional to the caster, I mean, the target's uh, speed on this. But for skill 1 and two, uh, 3, it's uh, based on the caster's speed so uh extra damage there if you can boost his uh speed and you can squeeze extra bit of damage with uh, self memory imprint as well which i don't have so that is his stats it is very high uh to be honest like my stats would be better on my first account but that's already pretty godly uh to a lot of players watching the video so uh these are his uh pieces of gear and it's definitely pretty solid this one i mean the offensive power is not so high i would wish the crit damage was higher and maybe some crit chance which i don't need because i'm using midnight bloom anyways and his exclusive equipment actually gives you a critical hit chance which is very very good in terms of value and i have him on portrait of the saviors and the exclusive equipment I mean, this goes up to uh, 12 or 13 critical hit chance. I was fine with 11 because, like I said, I have Midnight Bloom on my Sinful Angelica, which gives 16% crit chance for the, the other heroes on the team. I mean, the whole team. So damage dealt is increased by 20% when using Dimensional Explosion, which is skill number three. That thing is insane pushes his damage to uh, some pretty insane levels. And if I had him at 100% crit chance, he would be really close to 200,000 uh, uh, CP, actually. So my second cleaver will be Arbiter Veldred. To be honest, like since I have an attack buffer, I could be replacing this with a portrait of uh, the Saviors, which uh, I will do now. I'll take that one here. So it's going to be uh, more reliable. Of course, Alexis Basket is uh, better overall overall if you're using uh, him on defense arena guild war if you're using him for uh, world arena i mean uh, it's better than a portrait for sure so uh, next hero is uh, my faithless Letica. the speed is not so high 263 i need to work on that but that's her gear here and uh, yeah i mean uh, she's very good but you can be using a combat unit booster like judith is one of my favorite you know, 117 base speed, so, so good. Uh, Sasha Aiten is uh, quite solid, though, on Faithless Lydica. So, uh, Faithless Lydica boosts the uh, survivability of your team because of skill nullifier, putting sk one skill, uh, well, the skills on cooldown of one target if you have high effectiveness, which I don't have. So, I need to work uh, on uh, her stats, though. So, next hero in the team is uh, Sinful Angelica, of course. And she's got 207 effect resistance. It's important to have high effect resistance on this hero if uh, you cannot you know uh, kill the bazaar on the enemy team uh, which is something that happens mostly when you use heroes that are single target damage dealers when i use like my green sid uh, on my first account or if i'm using my watcher shuri on this account here then uh, yeah bazaar can survive if i don't take him out because i have to deal with uh, the other two big threats on their team already but uh, that's going to be uh, the team, the setup. Let's try it in Arena and see what kind of damage we can get with Karik, man. After the buff and the exclusive equipment, it is uh, pretty insane what kind of numbers you can actually uh, dish out if you are not fighting heroes that are ice, of course. All right, here we go, baby. Okay. Let's see what kind of damage we can do here. But let's get buffed up first, of course. I do need some more speed on my Arbiter Vildred. Karik is actually uh, quite fast. So he's opening up. Let's see what kind of numbers we can get out of him. 
Come on, don't miss. Oh boy. Look at that, it's crazy. It's really crazy how much she can deal. And uh, I, I definitely uh, wanna, I'm just gonna leave him in my cleave comp. But when you have him on auto, if you turn on auto, he will actually use skill two before skill three, even if you have speed buff, which is really, uh, it's really annoying. But anyways, this battle is over, so let's move on to the next one. So, Karik, he deals a ton of damage. If the team doesn't have multiple layers of protection, uh, I'm talking like Barrier, Aureus, Adam and Shield. Uh, so yes, he will deal a lot of damage, especially since he penetrates defense by 30% when he has speed buff. The skill number two doesn't actually deal that much damage. If you're trying to single out a hero, like let's say a martial artist can, uh, if they have a few layers of protection, barrier, like Siphon, Cecilia on Aureus, this thing will not uh, let you kill, uh, you know, an ML can, a tanky hero. And uh, you can be using this to take out like a Bazaar if he's built like uh, very fast. You could potentially just like remove their immunity if they have it because most of the time they don't have actually immunity if they're going for pure speed. And then you can just like, you know... Uh, put skill on cooldown. If it doesn't get resisted, of course, guess the speed buff you can follow with skill number three. But let's use skill number three here. This team is uh, pretty squishy, so it should deal quite a bit of damage here. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's pretty ridiculous what kind of uh, damage, uh, let's just do this faster, what kind of damage you can actually do, man. But uh, yeah, for a single target damage dealer, there's better options. So let's go here, let's try to cleave this. There is an ML can, so that's definitely uh, rough. But I'll just give it a shot and see what actually happens. Now, if you're running Faithless Lydica, now since my Karik is actually going before Faithless Lydica, that's an issue. Because if I had skill nullify on him, of course he would be surviving, you know, like an ML can. Uh, but, I mean, two heroes, uh, you know, an Elbrus from Charles Triggering, if he survives plus, like, ML, it's just going to be too much. But let's see how much damage he can do here. Okay, I mean, ML Ken was almost gone, but uh, it's okay, it's okay. Now, like I said, the single target damage is nothing crazy on skill 2. Uh, I prefer to use... A hero like Earth, Sid, he kills, he gets an extra turn. He's got the Soul Burn on skill 3 to boost the damage even further. Uh, you want to use Watcher Shuri, he's just going to take out pretty much anyone one shot. Uh, so you can do that instead. But in terms like of uh, cleaving, he's very strong. So I'm bringing him versus Seaside Bellona. Definitely not the brightest of ideas but i just want to show it i mean if they're running a, th a team that is like uh not using a, a bunch of like protections like uh, Orius barrier adam and shield they do have adam and shield because it's crimson arm and probably wearing uh you know uh, Orius as well so we'll just see what kind of damage we can do and maybe we land a crit on seaside let's just see here okay i got lucky and i did land it uh, let's say she's on 15,000 health, uh, she would still be alive. So if you're going to be doing that, if you're going to be using a, another damage dealer, like I'm using Arbiter Vildred, if you're going to be using a, uh, a cleaver, then maybe Seaside is going to be able to survive. Uh, since I have Arbiter, I can do it. But if I didn't crit Seaside, as long as I cleared the rest of the team, I'll be able to clean up after. He can always like go down and come back. The skill nullifier is great as well. To boost our survivability. So we have here a, a team that has Alencia and Fawn Cecilia. Let's uh, forget about the rest of the team. This is not like a meta team, but I want to see how much damage she's able to deal versus tankier heroes. Uh, since we have speed buff in this team composition, that's why Faithless Lydica, I think, is not able to go right uh, after. Uh, you know, maybe sinful. I would have to make my Karik slower. Uh, 
so I could have my skill nullifier before he goes. But that's something that I just wanted to point out if you're trying to, uh, to have uh, Faithless go twice before him. So let's see the damage here. We could get the evasion uh, from uh, Holdi Yufine. Let's see what kind of damage we can do. Oh, it's... Uh, Okay, it's it's really high uh, for the rest of the team. Of course, uh, you know, Fawns is not took a lot because she's got Aureus. Alencia didn't take that much though. So we're gonna be able to uh, clean up here. I, I sort of like just want to... Hmm. No, if I attack her, she's gonna get her buff, probably. So uh, let's just do it, let's just do it. But if you have double knight, uh, like, uh, you know, Fawn, Cecilia plus Alencia, they can take out a Cleave team by themselves. So that's very dangerous. Now, we can see the single target damage of his skill number two. She does have Mind's Eye activated, so she has, I believe it's 30% more defense. So let's see here. She's a tanky hero, man. Okay, 15,000. Pretty good, pretty good. Quick review for Karik. I would say that he is a very strong hero to deal a lot of damage to their whole team. If you do have speed buff, you're going to need like Yuna or Sinful Angelica to really pull it off. Or maybe you're using a Rosite for the speed buff and then an attack buffer, maybe like Rose. Uh, so I would say that his skill 3, yes, it deals a ton of damage. He is at a... Uh, disadvantage of course when you're bringing him versus ice so that's a problem uh you don't bring him versus ice that's just not a smart idea especially versus a tanky seaside bellona if you don't have an arbiter vildred with him to to cleave then you could be in for uh some problems and uh you should pick him in a world arena uh last so they don't counter him with uh, ice heroes but right now the, the the meta is really tanky uh thankfully he does have 30% defense penetration, but if they start to bring heroes like, you know, if they have Crow in there with a bunch of other knights, uh, it's definitely going to be rough. But in Arena, uh, let's say you're fighting teams with uh, Rowana, he's going to be able to deal a lot of damage, and uh, Fall and Cecilia is going to have a lot of damage t uh, taken because she's carrying Aureus. Uh, I mean, if you're bringing him versus uh, an evasion hero like uh, Remnant Valad, you could be in for some uh, disappointment. So ice is a big problem, especially if they have more than one. Uh, if you get uh, you know counterpicked counter in uh, World Arena, you pick him last. That's why you might want to pick Seaside Bellona first. You could be cleaving with uh, Karik and uh, Seaside Bellona together with the Combat Trinus booster. Like I like to use Judith, uh, Three Star Thief, and Sinful Angelica, and then uh, two AOE damage dealers, or a single target damage dealer and an AOE damage dealer, or two single target damage dealers. So I would say that. Great damage on skill 3, very surprising. Uh, great uh, value here out of the crit chance. 20% more damage on skill 3 is great, great, great. More speed means more damage on skill 1 and 3. So that, that's amazing. And uh, yeah, you definitely need the speed buff. Uh, so you could be opening up with skill number 2. More like in a guild war than let's say in arena or a world arena. Really depends. Uh, but this thing can be used if you build him fast, you open with this thing, and then you dispel the immunity, let's say on a bazaar, if they, if they don't have a Fall and Cecilia on the team, uh, and then you're going to be able to, uh, you know, put the skill on cooldown of bazaar, so that buys you time, and you're, you might be able to one-shot him, because the multiplier on this is pretty solid. The unfortunate thing is that if you're going for pure damage, he doesn't have a soul burn to increase the damage of his skill 2. I mean, skill 3 soul burn damage would be just way too much, considering the exclusive equipment he, he received. Silence on skill 1, if you can uh, keep him in play, would be very good. Uh, if you can get some attack percentage memory imprints, of course, squeeze a bit more damage. You can be wearing Tagil's Ancient Book on him if you feel like the damage is overkill already. If you're speed cleaving with this hero against teams that are squishy, no problem. You're going to be able to destroy them unless they have uh, Ice Hero or Heroes. But if you bring him versus a team that has multiple layers of protection, Barrier Aureus, Adamant Shield, Defense Buff, then you could be in for some, uh, some problems. Um, you definitely want to go first so don't, they don't have defense buff on them. But still, uh, if you have two solid cleavers, you can make it happen if they don't have ice heroes. So overall, I'm, uh, I'm basically saying that his damage is really good for cleaving. For single target damage, 
uh, there are better heroes than him if you want to take out a big threat. I prefer like Earth Sid. He's at elemental advantage with speed. Soul burn on skill 3. He's able to uh, take out someone else because he's going to get an extra turn on a kill and uh, or lower that other hero so your second damage dealer cleaver or single target damage dealer can just take it out so i would say that he's about the cleave damage or you could be building him as a threat in a world arena uh you can use the exclusive equipment that boosts uh for skill two that gives him attack buff for two turns so you use skill two potentially take out uh, one of their squishy because you're pretty fast and then you have attack buff follow up with this you got 30% more speed because you have speed buff. So you're going to be able to uh, sort of like maybe cut again, especially if you have, I don't know, some CR push between or something like that. You might be able to overlap throughout the battle uh, pretty nicely as well. So there's different ways to build this hero, but this is how I built him. Let us know in the comment section, how have you built your Karrick? Did you summon for him? Do you feel like he's worth summoning for? I would say he is not. Uh, even though he's pretty solid, but he's not limited. He is at a weakness versus ice, of course. Uh, better save your Mola for a hero that is light or dark for PvP. Or a hero that... Well, I mean, if you need a cleaver and... Because uh, Seaside is still pretty... Uh, it's showing up in the meta still. Maybe not anymore so much. It's more like Remnant uh, Violet, really. Uh, but still, it really depends how the meta shifts, and uh, he can definitely shine in quite a few places. I'll try to showcase him in Guild Wars as well, and maybe some World Arena later on. But to be honest, like I was, uh, I was happy with uh, his uh, performance. Let us know what you think about this hero. But that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, I'm Astronox. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Press the bell icon for like to be notified whenever I release a new video. And check out my other videos. They should be showing up on the screen now. I got playlists of all sorts. Just check them out. Check my description. Check the pinned comment. Press the I at the top right. Check my second YouTube channel. It's called Astronox Gameplay for extra epic seven gameplay videos. But that's really it for this one. Good luck with all you do. I'm Astronox. Peace out for now.